Let's imagine, for a while, that you're a scientist who desperately wants to get something to space. Now, this thing isn't small like a shoebox, it's quite large. Let's say it weighs about £100,000. How will you get it to space? You can't just build a regular rocket to launch something like that. You've got to build something heavy, something super heavy. You might even call it a super heavy rocket. And that's precisely what NASA had been doing. Today on Super Freaky Science, we'll be talking about the super heavy rocket that NASA is building. The SLS We know what you're thinking of. If NASA is just now building a super heavy rocket, what have they been using? Well, the answer is simple. They've been using the Space Shuttle. The Space Shuttle is also a super heavy rocket that was used to launch the Chandra X-ray Observatory on STS-93. The observatory weighs about 50,000 pounds when it got launched. But sadly, in 2011, the Space Shuttle got retired, and NASA decided that it would build another super heavy rocket, and this time it would be called the SLS. The SLS is a proposed super heavy lift expendable launch vehicle. NASA planned that the launch vehicle would be an integral part of the space exploration agenda throughout the 2010s. Unfortunately, the development of the vehicle hasn't met the proposed timeline set by NASA, but the agency hasn't yet given up on it. It's getting really close to completion. It's so close that NASA plans on using the Super Heavy rocket for launching its proposed return to the Moon in 2024. The plan for the SLS is beyond ambitious, and just two years after its announcement, people were already calling it the most capable Super Heavy launch vehicle to ever be proposed. What will the SLS look like? First off, it will be huge. How huge? Well, how huge does it have to be to carry a payload of about £200,000 to low Earth orbit? Exactly. That's how huge this ticket is going to be. The first stage of the booster will be powered by a central core stage, and the two outboard boosters attached to the side. The core stage of the rocket will be about 212 feet long and will be about 27 feet in diameter. The entire structure will be powered by four RS-25 engines at its base. The initial flights of the rocket will be using modified RS-25D engines left over from the Space Shuttle program. However, these engines are reusable, so later flights will be powered by versions of the engine that can't be reused. Of course, these engines will be cheaper. As of right now, NASA has completed the assembly of the two booster rockets that will help power the behemoth that is the SLS. It took several months, but the engineers at Florida's Kennedy Space Center have finally stacked the booster rockets in 10 segments. Each of the boosters is divided into five segments that are bookended by large rocket pieces. The boosters will be attached to the structure called the Mobile Launcher. The job of the launcher is simply to support the checkout, testing and servicing of the space landing system. The boosters will provide about 75% of the total thrust of the SLS at liftoff. When it finally comes online, the SLS will be, without a doubt, the most powerful rocket in the world, even more powerful than the Falcon Heavy by Elon Musk. It will be able to provide about 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust, making it 15% more powerful than the Saturn V rocket that lifted the Apollo missions. Where will the SLS be going to? Short answer, space. The maiden flight of the SLS is planned for November 2021, and it will be carrying the Artemis 1 mission hardware and CubeSat for 10 missions in the CubeSat launch initiative. The launch will be on a translunar injection trajectory, which means it will be arriving on the moon. The next flight will be a crewed lunar flyby that will happen on August 2023. And finally, for now at least, there will be a crewed lunar rendezvous and landing by October 2024. Before we go on, we've got our tiny wager for you. Don't worry, it won't take too much of your time, here's the wager. 
We'll tell you a super freaky fact right now, and if you've never heard it, smash the like and subscribe buttons. If you haven't, don't. It's as simple as that. Here's the fact. Your stomach enzymes digest you when you die. Of course, that raises the question, what digests your stomach enzymes when you die? Do they digest themselves like some sort of biological inception, or do their stomach enzymes digest them in return? Who knows? No one. That's who. So, should you be expecting a moon landing by 2024? NASA thinks yes, but here at Super Freaky Science, we think no. We might not have fancy degrees in astrophysics, but we do have a bit of common sense, something that people don't usually accuse people with PhDs of having. Before President Biden's predecessor Donald Trump left office, Vice President Mike Pence set a 2024 target for the Artemis moon landing. Ordinarily, that would be an ambitious goal even if NASA got all the funding it needed. And it didn't. When NASA was considering the human landing system to get the next man or woman to the moon, they asked for about $3 billion in funding. Sadly, they only got $800 million. It seems unlikely to us here at Super Freaky Science that's something that wouldn't at least delay some of the ambitious plans. But we may be wrong. NASA has done the impossible before, and maybe they may prove us wrong yet again. But we wouldn't bet on that because, well, if NASA does push the Artemis landing back a few weeks or even a few months, it would hardly be the first time that they would be delaying a launch. Oh, and before we leave, here's an update to the Starship SpaceX's building. Elon Musk has promised a lot of major updates with the SN15, so maybe we'll have specific news on that front soon. Who knows? That's it for us. If you love this video, do remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Goodbye, and remember to stay super. Leave the freaky science part to us.